uh, I want to thank you, Monty Rogers, incredible comedian from Atlanta, coming uh, to kick it with me, man, on my show, See Stand Up, uh, on my YouTube channel, man. Thank you for coming out, bro. Oh, I appreciate it, bro, man. appreciate you having me up out here today, man. No, this is cool, man. I appreciate you know when you and your you and uh, Kidar came up here and checked me out in Chicago, came and checked out some of the scene, man. I was very happy. You know, we very rarely ever get brothers that come up that really, you know, trying to lay it down. So I was I was hoping to be able to bring some more hospitality to y'all soon. Um, yeah. And, and so this is just a piece of it, you know. Yeah, yeah, because uh, that was our first time, man. Well, that was actually my first time coming up in Chicago. Yeah. And doing stand up in Chicago, cause you know Chicago is a beast, man, in the stand up comedy game, mm -hmm. man. Just yeah, come we out got there people everywhere, up. and and when you come out, you strong. You know what I'm saying? When you yeah. dealing with our scene, you you know what you're doing on stage. You know, so I was glad to see y'all participate and do your thing, man. So that's what's up. Uh, first of all, now I'd like you to kind of give a brief. Um, synopsis of who you are and what you do for the people that are watching this that may not have uh may not know you or who've never bumped into you anywhere all right yeah man my name is monty rogers i'm a professional stand-up comedian i've been doing comedy for 13 years uh <laughs> started in virginia beach virginia man um, i was doing the virginia beach funny bone Okay. Yeah, I moved down to Florida. I was dealing with the Jacksonville Comedy Zone and Jacksonville Improv. Yeah. And now man, I'm up here in Atlanta, Georgia. I've been here for the past five years. Comedy's a beast here in Atlanta, man. It's like yeah. every night. Uh, right now, you know, since we're dealing with this uh, COVID-19, you know, <laughs> comedy's now right here amongst us, amongst Zoom. Yeah. YouTube, and also yeah. Uh, Facebook and Instagram Live now. Right, 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 right. So, um, yeah, so are you originally from Virginia area or where are you from? Like where you go to high school, that type of thing. Yeah, I'm born and raised about a Charlotte, North Carolina, man. West oh, side. Okay, man. Charlotte got a real nice scene, man. Yeah. Y'all yeah. got a real nice scene there. I mean, it ain't it could use some more rooms, but y'all got, you know, the the comedy zone is actually headquarters there. Uh, I didn't yeah. have good conversations, good interactions with Joel uh, from there. And Heffron is okay. You know, he's the boss, so he's cool with me. I'm not uh, one of his favorite dudes or what never was, you know, that type yeah. of thing. So uh, give me a little little, uh, little insight on how your, um, how your upbringing in, Car in, uh, you know, in, in Charlotte was, man. Like, oh, how did you man. get introduced to it? Man, I think comedy, I think I was born with it, man. Yeah. Cause, you know, coming up uh, in a black household, man, you had to have thick skin. Like, man, and <laughs> right. you think that your mom, my, my mom wasn't the type that could be like, oh, that's, I understand, or knew you feel. No, my mom cracked jokes on you. Like, man, yeah. like, messed up, she called you that dumb motherfucker. Or, like, I can't believe <laughs> right. dumbass. And, motivation. Man, that's what it is. That's black motivation. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do it now. You can't do it now amongst these kids. Man. Yeah, that's why God ain't give me no kids. You know, because oh, <laughs> I don't know how to. I wouldn't know how to not do that. I know it works. You know, what I'm saying yeah, you can't. Yeah. You know, nowadays, you know, I don't want to get off into that conversation because this is your time, bro. So, <laughs> how many brothers and sisters did you have, money? Oh man, I got two older brothers, man. I got. I'm the baby of the. Oh uh, no, <laughs> that's old. great. That's great. That means you uh you look you need the attention and you probably got beat up quite often by your older brothers. Little brothers yeah. get beat up pretty bad. Yeah. I did, <laughs> uh, man. Yeah. And then man, you know, I just learned the game from them a, a lot, man, because it was an eight and eleven year difference wow. between all three of us. So man, okay. so going through the time when I can memorize stuff, they were going through, man, when they were messing around with girls and you know, middle school and high school days. So yeah. That's how I grew up um, with my comedy. Um, just learning from them as well. Okay, so you so you infuse a, a lot of your upbringing and your uh, present life into comedy, huh? Yeah, yeah, man. It's like I get comedy every day. Like anything that that we dealing with, dealing with family wise or on the news, dealing with this Rona and everything. Yeah, that's comedy to me, man. this thing's so been a beast, day. man. 
before yeah. the before the corona hit what were you uh what were you kind of doing with your you know with your career what what did you have planned what were you working on you know what what type of thing oh. were you going through Man, we had shows, man. I'm talking, we had some shows. I had a I had a nice summer that was coming up mm. for the 2020. Uh, and then when the Rona hit, I was up in Vegas uh, and, and trying to get some work out there, man, celebrating my 40th birthday. But uh, then, man, just had to come back here to Atlanta. But, man, I had shows playing. Um, we had Carolina. We had Texas coming up. Yeah. Florida. So it was it was going to be a good summer. Man, that's awesome, bro. And I hear you keep saying we. Is there? A, do you have a partner, or are you just talking about Kedar, who's your role buddy, or you know what? What? What do you mean, we? Man, I'm just agents? talking about. I'm just talking about myself, man. But actually, you know, like with my line brother Kedar, he's yeah. um, from, you know, from Hell Day, BT Hell Day, and yeah. uh, Comedy View and everything, man. But he normally works with Finesse, Finesse Mitchell. Yeah, which is our frat brother as well, man. He's normally the opening act or the host of any show that Finesse might be having going on. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm saying I'm, we, I'm talking it. about me and that money. Me and that yeah. money. I was about to go hit it hard, man. Yeah, that that's awesome, man. That's right. awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. um, do you kind of uh, get on, try to get down with uh, Kadar and um and, and Finesse also? Is that like yeah. the trio y'all put together to travel the country, or is that um, not well, on the plan? It's not on the plan. It, I do want it to be a plan, but you know, coming in this comedy business, we gotta learn, man, that you gotta throw a little bit extra color in. It can't be all of us on one show. You know what I'm saying? Well, so, I understand where you're coming from with that, bro. Yeah. I don't believe it, and I don't like I don't it. Be, I but I know it. that I know that certain headliners. Cause they had the most control over who's on their shows. They'll yeah. they like to speckle it up a little bit so that one you, they don't everybody don't touch the similar uh, topics, you know. And and then yeah. there's something special when they hit the stage. I get it, it's business and all. I just uh, hope that sooner or later, especially after this COVID hit, that we, especially as noobs who doing comedy realize that man our strength is in what we came from you know what i mean yeah. if you can fill up your audience with you know 70 percent brothers and black folks from the d9 and then that other 30 percent be those people in the second shows and third shows start happening you know so yeah. i get it man and i hope that he uh finesse you know who's you know i guess in our top 10 of bigger comics that i noobs uh comes to the belief that he can work with a show with all three of y'all and it still be to his benefit because that's all yeah. we're talking about. You know? Yeah, because we did we did Conclave 2009 together okay. in Washington, D.C. That was good, man. All three of us did that. Um, but, man, you know, just coming in this comedy game, you got to understand the comedy business and that's how some headliners might throw it at you like that. I work with Joe Clare, which is a new man uh, yeah. out of Morgan State. Yeah. Oh man, he shows mad love to me, man. So yeah. you know, it's different vibes for different noobs. Absolutely, and there's different things going on out here. Yeah, that's fantastic, man. I haven't had the um, pleasure of talking to Joe Claire directly. I interact with him on email a few times and on Facebook. Uh, and before I became a comic, I was a DJ at at uh, Chicago's most popular black comedy club, which was called All Jokes Aside. And at that time, I, uh, you know, he and I interacted in that space. But I was, you know, I wasn't even a noob at that time. I was just a young cat who was loving comedy and shit like that. So yeah. that's what it is, man. So during the COVID right now, what are you doing? Because a lot of brothers have had to change their game. You know what I mean? We are uncertain about what comedy is going to look like after this stuff leaves, right? We yes. may not be able to, it's going to be hard to get 200 people in a room, 500 people in a room again, because everybody's right. scared of each other, right? So brothers have started to branch off. Black men, I mean, you know, comics, our brothers in comedy, not just new folk, not just black men, but guys in comedy have branched off into other peripheral hustles, man. So do you have any, do you, you know, what, what, do you, what, what are you working on? Man, you know, I'm content? working on yeah, actually, I'm building my brand, man. So making sure that I can be able to capitalize after everything is over with, man. So it's just not going to be just Monty Rogers, the comedian. It'd yeah. be Monty Rogers, the writer. Monty Rogers, the DJ. Monty Rogers, okay. the host. Monty <laughs> Rogers, the actor. I'm building up all this during this uh, 
pandemic right now. But right now, uh, I do have my Facebook live show that yeah. I do every Friday night uh, at 11.05, like how they used to do it uh Def Jam, the late night hours. It's yeah. called the Rare Room Edition Quarantine Session, hosted by <laughs> me, Monty Rogers. Yeah. And then I'm about to start something real smooth, man, on Sunday yeah. at 7.11 uh, okay. East Coast time. It's going to be called Cadillac Confessions. Okay. And that's going to be something for the grown folks sit up in the lag, smoke a blunt or smoke a cigar, and we can be able to talk and do all types of jokes right there in the Cadillac. That's awesome, bro. What I would like to uh, introduce you to is Mark Zuckerberg is starting to uh, change the platform of Facebook. So you'll find on your Facebook that now is kind of conducive to what you're doing on both Friday and Saturday. I think you should go to his page and look that video up. Because okay. it's, it's, a, it's a situation where you have a room that's connected to your Facebook page that would be more of a room where you can select and be more inclusive of who's going to come in. And you also yeah. have the ability to invite directly people into that. So, and, and there's a section of it that's set up for events. So that would be dope, especially if you get on it before everybody else. Cause I already oh, saw you, I Mark. saw you, um, your flyer. Uh, it was um, up on another day and I was like, man, well, is this tonight? But you was like, no, it's Friday. Uh, and then you said something else, and by the end, I had already gone to the next thing. You know, you know yes. how Facebook is. I was like, damn, it ain't today. I, I'm looking for something right now. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was it, man. So it's cool. Um, do you have any kids, man? How are they adjusted? Oh, yeah. I got I got a total of three, man. I got a 20, 20 year old. He's mm -hmm. in the army. Also, I got a uh, nine year old, and I got a seven year old down here with me in Atlanta, Georgia, man. Mm. They, uh, homeschooling, oh, that was that was that was crazy to adjust. Man. <laughs> uh, uh, I I don't know what these teachers was thinking they was doing, man, but they just threw all the work on the parents. Like we still got to work our jobs. Like is man, that right? Gotta teach. Yeah, so you got to wake up in the morning, get them ready, teach up in the living room or up in the dining room, or make sure they're going online, and yeah. then they got a full day schedule. Why you still got a full work schedule. So right. it's crazy, man, right now, man. But hey, we worked it out, man. My kids is taken care of. They they doing real good, man. They just miss having their friends. That's it. <laughs> I'm sure that uh gives you some insight on how hard them teachers are working. Cause they got they ain't got just one or two, they got 40, 30 in the classroom, they, you know. And man, they are emailing more, they calling more. They yeah. are on there. I'm talking, these teachers is making sure that these kids are doing the work, man. I'm like, don't do not do this, man. Like, I get an email at 7.30 in the morning from my first grade. Oh, yeah. man, her teacher would email all day long. I'm like, <laughs> it's, not, it's not that crazy. But it oh, is. man. That, that actually, I, I'm proud of them. They're actually showing that they care about your kid, man. Yeah. They you do. know what I mean? They're doing a good job. Uh, when they have them in their presence, and now that they don't have them in their presence, they still doing their job. Cause they you know, I could—I don't know if I could have been a teacher. I'd be like, "Hey, you—you you on your own with your son right now?" You know what I'm saying? Look, I said the first grade teacher is like that, but the third grader. Oh, we don't hear. I think I think she's on vacation right now. <laughs> she in Tahiti, huh? <laughs> she's just like, look, I I send in final grades later. Oh, that's awesome. That's funny as hell. <laughs> that's going to yeah. be the new sitcom. I bet you it's going to be a sitcom wrote off of yeah. that, man. That's cool. So uh, you were saying you were in Vegas, man. Have you made your trip to uh, L.A. or New York uh, consistently? Not consistently. I haven't been out to L.A. in probably about the like past eight years. Yeah. So I needed – I was going to go out there for the um for the 420. It was the – um. It was the meetup. It was the all the comedians was gonna meet up there for April twentieth. Yeah. And do a uh, show with Hope Flood and all them. Right, right, right. So I wanted to go out there, man. And then the last time I've been to New York was in two thousand ten, man. Yeah. I just, I just got. I, I found my lane. My lane was like southeast, south, southeast. I'm, I'm a yeah. southern breed, you know what I'm saying? So I found my lane here in Atlanta. Like you can just, I can stay in Atlanta, and eat all day. Yeah, that's sort of like Chicago, man. We don't really, a lot of people are moving from Chicago down there. One of the reasons is because our main club uh, for black folks, um, uh, uh, Jokes and Notes, closed down. 
And then a lot of cats couldn't sustain their own rooms in Chicago because mm -hmm. they, they really don't have, uh, may or may not have the work ethic to keep it going. And black folks in Chicago kind of fickle. You know what I mean? They will uh, turn on you if, if shit goes south in, in any way. You know, it could be, you know, the drinks was watery. So now, you know, oh, you got that's half of the yeah. yeah. that's, that's how they be down here, man. So yeah. it's not just Chicago. <laughs> okay, well, we got to figure that something out about them, man. Um, and so that's cool. Myself, I've uh, I've kind of branched onto. I have my own little spot down in, in uh, this area I'm in. I'm on the north side of Chicago in a suburb called Evanston. Mostly, I spend my time mm -hmm. doing. Uh, I got an I had an arrangement before this COVID with this distillery called um, Few. It's a it's a it's a whiskey and and bourbon distillery so i had a little show with them and then i was doing my own show i have a sh relationship with the city of evanston and i was doing a show for them so those were the things that i was going to try to get y'all up here on but this covid then threw me for a loop on that now i yeah. say that to to bring up the fact that i've had to change what i'm doing so now yeah. besides the fact that me and my girl have a series of magazines that we develop in order to keep the bills paid I have a I have a relationship with this uh, graphics app where you know you'll have a meme. You got the app. You put the picture in the meme, and you can add picture, hat letters, and all that to the picture. So I got one of those with my C stand up company and a couple okay. of the hustles. You know what I mean? So do yeah. those on hustles now that add to it. You know? Yeah, because that's so, what everybody's on now, man. Everybody's trying to get different uh forms of income coming to them man you can't just because yeah. uh, like you said man this uh covid19 pandemic hey it really made people step their game up now like hey if, you, if you're not doing because i think it really leveled the playing ground for all comedians now to me that's just me personally yeah There's no such thing is like oh this is an internet comedian or this is a, a, a traveling comedian and all there's, there's no such thing as that now man everyone now is on the same level playing ground um I, okay I, i'd say uh that's a sound argument to where we at today but then uh, internet comedians got a leg up because they got two four five million hits and structure you know what i mean so they you do. know we, but yeah. they guess what right now they don't got them comedy clubs to be touring in no, but they, they never needed the comedy clubs. They did the comedy clubs for whatever reason, but like um, that dude, King Shula, you know that dude? He's a cute. Yeah. Okay, yeah. that dude never, you know, and when you go see him at the comedy club, nobody was like overly impressed with what he was doing on stage, but his videos are what's keep what has kept him afloat, you know? Yeah. So I think it is it is leveled out by cats like myself and you we got to go to this like this type yeah. of thing or, or whatever medium in it we're gonna use but those dudes have a leg up on that now when the shit open back up we all gonna have to repolish you know what i'm yeah. saying we yeah. all gonna have to get back to doing what we do yeah uh and then you we already gonna... know the yeah. whole set your whole set is gonna be about coronavirus <laughs> well you know uh at least for the first two months it ain't gonna be nothing but <laughs> corona talk you know? That's you it. Know? so hey and and rightfully so shit we've been stuck in the house for what a month now already yep. and we probably got another two weeks to a month to go before we even can safely come out you know and talk oh to well them. they told us to come on out man yeah. down here in the eight. They said they're trying to kill y'all. They trying to kill y'all. Y'all motherfuckers is the guinea pigs. I definitely would stay my ass in at least four days. You don't yeah. rush your ass out there. Don't come out there first day. I don't personally know the burial ritual by by heart. So I'm gonna be reading that your shit. And I would rather you not <laughs> put me through that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got there trying to read it, that ritual, boy. That yeah. thing don't even sound right. I know. That's what I'm saying. I'm, <laughs> I'm like, ooh, we be embarrassing ourselves yeah, during the ritual. 
you know, so, but hey, this might be the chance for us to get good at it. If you motherfuckers <laughs> rush y'all asses nah, outside. Nah, nah. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good, man. Like y'all mm -hmm. may say, I'm staying my ass at home. <laughs> exactly. Give yourself at least a week, man. See how it go, because damn, I mean, it don't even sound right. You see what happened in Florida. They, they opened up the beach. Them yeah. people ran down there, and now they rates of of uh, death then rise, and then went up. Oh yeah, yeah. Dumbest. They say they say I should go up by like in another two weeks. It should double. Yeah. So why be one of the dudes in the hospital? Costing? Oh no. Nah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not nobody's guinea pig, man. But it's just crazy that they open up and yeah. then they don't give a fuck about. Well, even the president said he wouldn't even open this joint up right now. <laughs> Right, but the uh, but y'all governor, you know, whoever that white dude was, he was like, yeah. we opening it up, and he probably yeah. ain't even in y'all city. He probably is nah. ass in some goddamn island somewhere, living his <laughs> ad, living it up or something. You know how they do try to do us, mm -hmm. but we not dumb. We we survive better than roaches. So yeah, yeah. On, I'm like, trying to tell you, you just said that coronavirus in Walmart. That's when niggas ain't going back. That's how you gonna mess <laughs> up the economy. Yeah, so we, that's what we've been at. Walmart, well, McDonald's. <laughs> yeah. Or McDonald's. You say that, yeah. The economy, yeah. Then this that's yeah. what's up, man. So it's like this, bro. We're gonna I generally respect every brother's uh time that I deal with, man. And uh I enjoy talking and I enjoy kicking it with yeah. my brothers as comics, especially, you know, so we could do this all day, you know. But yeah. I do want to get to my last and final question, man. So <clears throat> I know you had a lot of things booked. Everybody's bookings dropped. Um, beforehand, you had it set up. Now, post-COVID, do you have a plan? What is it? Um, if you're willing to share it, you know what I mean? And how can my people see you? Uh, I know on Friday, we're going to put your, uh, put your, your, uh, your show up, but how can my yeah. people find you and see you? So start off with the do you have a plan, bro? Yes, I have a plan. My plan is, man, to capitalize by any means necessary dealing with this COVID-19 right now. Mm -hmm. What I'm saying by capitalizing, man, I'm going to make sure that I'm going to be a stress reliever to the people out there that's suffering. I'm going to mm -hmm. make sure I'm going to bring them but that funny, bring them but the great jokes, and try to get your mind off of things, man, while we looking through this world and we be like, yo, the news is terrible. Everything else is going down. What else can I bring yourself up with? So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be your stress reliever during this time. So after this is over with, you're going to be like, look, I'm going to go see that man, Monty Rogers, man. Right, I'm going right. to make sure that I'm going to support him. Because during this time frame, he was saying the stuff that I was thinking, but he was my boss during this time. So I'm going to inspire you during this time. That's awesome. That's awesome, man. So where can my people find you, bro? Where can they find man, you at? Check me out. I'm on Facebook. Uh, you can Google me. Just uh, Monty, M-O-N-T-E-E, -E, Rogers, R-O-G-E-R-S. I don't do no D in my last name. <laughs> okay. You got, a, uh, you got a website or is it Facebook or Instagram? Facebook, Instagram. I don't do that TikTok shit, man, because I ain't doing no challenges and dancing for these fools. Like, <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. I hear that, man. So that's awesome, bro. And again, I appreciate you taking your time uh, mm -hmm. uh, out of your schedule to give me this little 30 minutes you gave me, man. Tell your family. I said, man, stay safe. Love y'all. Love you, bro. And I look forward to you coming to Chicago. Yo. Yeah. Same love back in there. Take it easy. Be safe. Yes, sir.